So now, generally speaking, if you've been here for any length of time, uh, you'd know that this is not exactly any type of tech channel. Uh, but I decided that gigabyte cards get so, so damn hot and so steamy that I finally have decided to deal lid wait that's not the right term to take off the cooler off my graphics card and put some of this shit on there and what this is is some icy diamond uh thermal paste so we're gonna put that on the thing and we're gonna check it to see if the monkey gets a little bit cooler because it gets really toasty in here now i've delitted my cpu before i know how to do that i'm a bit of an idiot and I still managed to do it, and I didn't break my shit. So now I'm going to do it with my graphics card, because why not? The graphics cards are real cheap right now. If I break it, I'm just going to buy another one. So, um, actually, I just forgot one very crucial part of this whole equation. And that's our initial benchmark. So I already ran a, uh, an original benchmark for our baseline, right? And so I understand you need to control the fan speed and everything like that so that you don't get a lower fan speed. So I ran the control and we got, well, I keep my GPU fan curve at like a upper echelon of like 56% uh, utilization. And around that is where it gets to 82 degrees Celsius, which is also my upper limit. It doesn't get any higher than that. Okay. So I ran the benchmark, and as you can see on the screen, right in your face, you can see right there, it gets to 82 degrees, and it doesn't move above 56% on the fan speed. So what now we know, at 56% fan speed, at around 2,000 revolutions of the fans, we know, 82 degrees. So if we get 5 degrees uh, cooler, that's a win. If we get 2 degrees cooler, you can count that as a win, but it's not much of a win. As long as I, like, I paid $10 for this, right? So what I should ideally get is $1 degree cooler uh, per, per dollar, right? If I don't get anything above that, then it's a failure. And I'm just going to return it. I'm going to return the card. I'm going to return everything. And I'm going to return my soul to Jesus Christ. Now at this point, uh, my mic just gave out, so I'm going to just do a voiceover. I've got the graphics card right here, it's pulled out of the case, and that's all fantastic and dandy. There's four screws on the back here, plus another three on the Gigabyte version card. you got to pull out these screws that hold down the actual die compressed to the heatsink. These ones have a little spring on them, so those are pretty cool. Make sure to not lose those because they are not the same as your typical screws that you're seeing here being pulled out right now. These are a little bit smaller. These don't have those springs on them. So having a ratcheting uh, screwdriver like this one's pretty good. It's pretty good, I'm not going to lie. You can just uh, pop this thing out. Now, I made that seem really easy. I actually took another 30 minutes to do that. <clears throat> I'm not joking. I looked up other videos how to do it, so here you are watching me how to do it from watching other people. Now, if you notice here, there's some thermal pads here as well. Uh, I didn't replace those. Those are fine in my experience. Just keep them there and uh, should be all right. Now, if you can see that, it's all caked on there and shit. It's all disgusting. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, that's that's, that's like a like whipped cream or something. Like, it just looks real bad. And uh, all that thermal paste on there has been caked on after years of use. There's also these connectors here, which I thought maybe I yanked out. As it turns out, there's really only one, and it's this bottom one right here uh, that, that actual, actually had a connection. So now we're just going to clean out these copper heat pipes, and I found that this X-Acto knife works actually pretty well at getting these nooks and crannies out. Look at that. Just squeeze that shit right on out. Pretty good. And then you just got to clean it up with the cotton swab. Now, at first, I also tried using a, an X-Acto knife on the actual die. I found that was a really stupid idea, so I switched to this wooden toothpick that I used to clean out my teeth when I ate salad uh, earlier. So, now we're just going to use this, and that actually worked really well. You got to make sure to not knock off those capacitors, because they are very, very tiny. I'm talking like half the size of a grain of sand. And you just keep doing that, you swab it down with the cotton swab, and boom, there you go. There's your die. Looking real pretty, nice and pretty, nice and Taiwanese. Thank you, China. About to invade, and there we are.
look at that. It's like a mirror. Now, I was very meticulous with this. You don't have to be as meticulous as I was, but uh, I like my, my, my stuff real clean, real nice. So, real shiny, mirror-like, mirror-like appearance. Now we get to the money shot right here. Of course, we're going to use a gigantic glob. And the reason for that is because we're not talking about an IHS with a heat sink attached. We're talking about a direct die contact. So I wanted to make sure that this had very uh, special, intimate relationship uh, with, with the actual paste itself and the heat sink uh, going uh, against the die. So I actually also squished this Play-Doh out, uh, I mean the compound out, and I put it right nice and flat on there. I, th I might have added more, I believe. But, uh, you know, any amount will do, so long as the entire die is covered in. Now I think we have audio here in the next clip, so I'll just let that run. As it turns out, a bicycle pump is actually pretty damn good for cleaning some of this garbage. Pretty good. Time to reattach. Those same thermal pads should work just fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to screw it back on, but I'm going to screw it back off to see the compression on the on the thermal paste. Just putting it back on won't really give us a good idea of how it would be under compression, but if we put it on, if you notice these screws have springs on them, that's the compression part of it I imagine to keep it nice and tight. I gotta be careful not to strip these screws, otherwise mother will kill me. I also put them in a cross pattern like the nerds on uh, all the tech forums tell me to do. Now that that's nice and squished, I'm gonna take it out and see what the product is looking like. Pretty good coverage, right? That's mostly good. I am noticing a little bit of this kind of pulling out to the side here. I might look at that for a second. Missing a little bit on the corners over here. I mean, that is some pretty damn good coverage. Look at that. Look at that coverage. I mean, if phone providers had that much coverage, I wouldn't have to bitch about them. I'm happy with that. And you have to remember to use the right screws in the right places because the compression screws are supposed to go on the actual... Uh, heat sink portion there on top of the die. And I think that's just about right. Look at that, nice and clean now. That is looking phenomenal. I think it's time that we slap it back in. Well, as you can see by our results here, um, we see about a two degree change at the same fan utilization. So now I'd like to take a short pause here to remind everyone that uh, while we are talking about benchmarking and, and baselines and experimentals and everything, uh, of course results will be different when you're actually using software, uh, like your games and things like that. And that's what I noticed when I was playing certain games, is uh, it actually had a little bit more of a temperature um, decrease than shown in the benchmark because it all depends upon your GPU utilization. Heaven runs uh, your GPU basically to 100%. 100% of the time. Most games are probably not going to be running you at 100%, 100% of the time. So you will actually see probably a bigger difference in games than you will in one of these benchmarks. Uh, and that's at the end of the day, what's really good, because when we are talking about a two degree change, you could still argue that that is a two degree change in your room. So if you're going from 78 degrees in your room, you could in theory be dropping to 76 over uh, enough time that you're measuring it and at the end of the day a two degree change is nothing to gawk at so just uh yeah just take that into consideration 
you know, uh, I don't, I don't really know what I was expecting. Uh, at first I made a mistake of tracking the heat, um, but I hadn't actually closed the case. And the reason I did that was because I was afraid that I might have messed it up and that it, it would have blown up. And so I just wanted to have it ready in case a piece flies out out of the case and I can catch it in time so I can put it back on. Um, but that didn't happen. It didn't blow up. Nothing's blown up. So that's great. Uh, uh, honestly, I, th I think that this was even scarier than delitting my CPU. Uh, but I think if it, this really depends on two things. One, do you care about the price of the thermal paste? Because if you don't care about that paste, if you don't care about the price of that, for example, that garbage I used was Tendora, okay? If you don't care, then okay, you pass on to the next question. Are you looking for every single degree change that you can get your hands on? Because if you're expecting a huge increase, uh, I would probably say don't do it uh out of the risk that you break something i mean i took about 20 minutes just cleaning that dye okay i used a toothpick that i probably picked and picked some kelp out of uh beforehand and i just kind of scratched it away and i i was very meticulous with it i left it pristine not everyone's going to do it like that and you risk a great deal when you actually do this little uh, operation. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna do this, just keep in mind you can lose your balls and uh, you might ac accidentally neuter your GPU. So uh, keep that in mind. Overall, this experience has been fun. Really, for me, this is a fun activity. So uh, the fact that I lost two degrees, well, I guess that's an added benefit. You'd benefit greatly more if you put just a GPU temperature limit, I think that'd probably be the most sane idea. And you can do that in Afterburn. That's no problem. Uh, uh, but the thing is, I'm also trying to maximize your performance. I'm not overclocked or anything. So uh, there you go. I probably should have said that earlier, but uh, well, I didn't. And that thermal paste was caked on there. I mean, it was caked on there. Uh, so I had to pick it away. And uh, that's risky. You just run a lot of risks. In any case, uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. I don't care what you do. I don't even know why I'm still talking. Uh, have a good day.